Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Let's take a quick glance at the two shows last night. St. Patrick's Day Slam opened up with Penton Cody, which was a very good opening match. And Cody got the pin, but it was all about making Penta into a star, even though he lost. I mean, they gave him everything during the match. Flash pin. Then he destroys Cody afterwards, which also plays in the storyline of Where's QT Marshall? How come this guy never comes out to make the save? That storyline continues. Young Bucks did a promo with Don Callis, where Don Callis does in fact admit, hey, you guys never super kicked me in that one video. I lied. But you know what? I was trying to get the real Young Bucks out of you. The Young Bucks from Japan. Look in the mirror, you guys. Do you see those two? Think about it. He's trying to turn them to the dark side. Jade Cargill got a squash match against Danny Jordan. She looked good in her three moves. Looks like a star. They're building up a match with Red Velvet. MJF, who is a fantastic promo, he had one job this week, and that is they had a big angle last week, a main event angle involving MJF, Chris Jericho, the inner circle, what's now called the pinnacle, which is MJF's group, and he had to cut... A promo to get this over as best as he could. And he hit a home run. I thought this was the best promo of MGF's career that I've ever seen. He came off as the biggest superstar in this promo. And he's got a great crew. And you've got so many inner circle versus pinnacle matches you can do. And obviously down the road, we've also got war games. I thought this was fantastic. We had Matt Hardy, Private Party, Butcher and Blade against Jurassic Express and Bear Country. Fun match. Marco Stunt was nearly killed, but he was saved by the Butcher. So hopefully he's got a nice Christmas card for that guy this year. We had a Christian promo where he talked about wanting to outwork everybody and become the champion. And he did admit, like, I got to win some matches here first. But one of these days down the road, I will see you, Kenny Omega. We had Kingston and Moxie versus the Good Brothers. Kingston and Moxley got the big win, and then they did the big angle afterwards where the storyline is that the Young Bucks have been friends with the Good Brothers and Kenny Omega, even though the Young Bucks are babyfaces and Omega and the Good Brothers are heels. So they're not they're not ignoring history. What they're doing is like, you know, they were friends. But now things have changed, and the Good Brothers and Omega are despicable people the Young Bucks, they're still friends, but you can see that this friendship is about to come crashing down as they came out to save poor John Moxley as he was being killed. And then the Good Brothers and Kenny wanted the two sweet, and the Young Bucks were like, dude, you guys are despicable. They went to leave. They got yelled at. They haven't broken up yet, but you can see where this is going. We had our weekly Sting segment, and the story this week is that Darby Allen has defended the TNT title three times since he's won it, which, as everybody has noted, what a horrible run. And he admits, this sucks. I want to defend this title every single week. So I guess he's going to start doing that now. And meanwhile, Brian Cage had a meeting with Sting and said, you know what? I respect you, and you're still the icon, which infuriated everybody in Taz's crew. Brian Cage storms off, so he may be turning babyface. We had Phoenix beating in Helico, just a quick match. We had more with Miro. They're doing exactly what everybody figured, which is Kip has agreed to do the tag match next week, which Miro, by the way, does not want to do. And so I think Kip's going to get beat, and then he's going to get beaten again by Miro. And finally, in the Lights Out Anything Goes match, Britt Baker, Thunder Rosa. Well, remember we talked about You know, under-promise and over-deliver. I mean, I can't say they under-promised, but they promised a lights-out-anything-goes match. And I expected some violence and some brawling and some chairs and some ladders, but they, in fact, over-deliver. We had double juice, thumbtacks. This match was, I mean, it's not always my cup of tea, but, I mean, if you were expecting a lights-out-anything-goes match... I don't think there's anybody that said, oh, I was expecting more. They gave you they gave you almost their lives. And Thunder Rosa got the big win. Brits bleeding all over the place. And so I guess probably Thunder Rosa is next in line for Sheeta's title. You know, they're holding off the Britt Baker thing, I guess. But I thought this show was awesome. And normally I would go over NXT next, but Mike, 
What were your thoughts on this AEW program here? I thought it checked off a lot of boxes. You know, as you mentioned, there was a little bit of something for everybody on this show. I mean, right off the bat, I got to say this. Uh, Alex, the Spanish language. Abrahantes or whatever. Abrahantes. This guy's the greatest. He is. There's no Dario Cueto out there. But there's been somebody in wrestling. We've been we've had a void of smugness that needs to be filled. And if they decide that they would like to make this gentleman a full time heel translator or a heel manager, I'm great with that transition or at least the possibility of it. He comes across so well, and I know he's got a ton of TV experience anyway, but I, I really thought, as in addition to Pentagon's deal, I think it's I think it's really good. So Can I, I tell I, you I, also why Alex Abrahantes, I think, is so fantastic? Yeah. Because they have this guy, I don't even know what his name is, he's been there forever, and he's just literally, he could be, he should probably, you know, try out for WWE. He's just, he's so much just a guy. He's the, he's the translator for, like, the Brazilians when they do UFC. He's like a tall guy. He's just got like sandy blonde hair. He's just a dude. And like they cut these promos and then he in the most boring manner possible translates them. And I'm trying to take notes, but I'm also trying not to go to sleep. <laughs> so this this Alex Abrahantes guy here, his job is to hear what this heel says and then tell you what he says, okay? Now, he should just tell you but he doesn't. He's filled with such glee as he tells you what this horrible person is saying. And I just watch it and I think, you know, he's such a gimmick. And like oh, one of these crazy. days, he's just, they got to keep, <laughs> they got to keep him with Penta and he's got to get filled with more and more glee. And then he can even do the deal where like he translate what, what Penta says, but then he adds something of his own on top of it. You know, Penta says like, Ah, da, 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 three words, and then Alex goes on for like 20 minutes with this promo, oh, so yeah. you know it's not everything that this guy said. And then he's got to start interfering in matches. I love this guy. I think he's awesome. Absolutely. And it, it, again, that's what it started with. And, you know, MJF's promo, one of the things that I I dislike sometimes about MJF comes across as an insult whisperer, comes across as a, a Don Rickles. You know, he's so good at doing the insults that – Unfortunately, I think he gets too tied up with that with his promos, and he's a lot more than that. When I've heard him on commentary, he did a good job, and it feels like eons ago now when he was on there, but he did a good job because it wasn't just the insult machine over and over. He it, There's a reason that he is. everybody has raved about him for so long now, being so young and so good, and that promo last night was a great example of it. Tully put the ball right on the tee, and then he came swooping in and just crushed it. And there were a lot of good things about last night. Obviously, it closes with Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa is fantastic. Britt Baker, it, she is the face of that promotion going forward. Now, and she's been there since day one, obviously. But as you see her improve, as you see her get better and better, as you see her just overcome things, the broken leg, the broken nose in the match, she doesn't sell it. She even knows where to look at the camera. Last night, same way, bleeding like a stuck pig and raises her head up and smiles at that camera, even though she's a heel. It's an iconic moment that once again, she lays out there. She is an absolute badass, did a hell of a job. Unfortunately, Thunder Rosa's badassery is getting passed over a little bit in this and getting uh, played down a little bit. It shouldn't be. She's outstanding. A very good show for AEW. Wasn't all hits. There were some misses in there, too. Sometimes it's a little busy. Sometimes it's a little crazy. They rely on too much when it comes to post-match stuff and outside interference and some things like that. But you know what? We can pick those nits later on as the show goes on if you want. Overall, it's a show I think people should catch if they missed it. I actually thought that show was less busy than usual. They started talking about, is it Bet Kings? I don't know. But they started uh, talking about some... Uh, There's Draft Kings. Draft Kings. Compulsive gamblers. They had some things to say here. There were only a few guys in the cage at the time, and they were down. So he escaped his pod early to take a gamble that he might be able to eliminate one of them. Which, by the way, did not pay off. But I was told, wait, Brian, it doesn't matter if the gamble pays off or not. I said, what? You're telling me 
that if you have a net worth of $500,000 and you see that it's the Seattle Seahawks against the Portland Trailblazers or whatever the Super Bowl might be, and you bet on the Seahawks, somehow the Trailblazers win okay. and you lose $500,000. Okay. You're broke, but you're telling me that you can go to your fucking wife and say, yes, dear, that's how professional gambling works. Do you know what your wife will say to you? She'll say, fuck you. We're divorced. <laughs> you compulsive gamblers. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.